Hi guys, so today I'll be going through a bullion mint while on my four soundless tunes. Now I chose floor four because it's one of the 44 cog mints. And so this way I'll be able to show you how to do it when you have the most cogs possible. Now my one tune went ahead like this to go ahead and lure while the other tunes are catching up. This is a very common strategy. Uh, and for the most part you are going to lure and have all four cogs lured before you begin the fighting the cogs. Now when you first start the mint you need to ask everyone what their organics are. Most likely at least two of you will have organic throw. If that's the case, um, when you hit this set of tens here do not under any circumstance use your cakes. Uh, what you would do here is you would use two creams on two different tens, you know, split the team up, attack two tens and then attack the other two tens the next round. Um, cakes are pretty much more important or more valuable to you than foghorns are to sounding tunes. They are, they are awesome. Uh, and if you have at least two people with organic throw, you're going to want to use them on the the battles that have two level 11s. None of my tunes have organic throw, so I went ahead and used four cakes on the set of 10s because it's the only place I can do that. So, and that, that allowed me to get that battle through in one round. If I had organics, I would lure this one and use three cakes, get this one over with qu quicker. However, I don't, so I went ahead and lured and passed. And now I'm gonna use the split cream method and I'm going to use two creams on each of the tens. Now remember when you're picking which cog you should attack, remember, keep in mind where your spot is at, like if you're in the middle left, middle right, right or left, and which cog you need to be attacking. So if you're one of the left two tunes, you should be attacking the left ten. If you're one of the right two tunes, you attack the right ten. And now with these elevens, I'm just going to do a storm and a uh, hose to get rid of them. Now when you're in here with four sound, soundless tunes, it's going to go much quicker than it does for me picking gags just because I am picking for all four tunes. Um, down in the description I'm going to link a handful of videos from the Soundless Colts channel showing how our various members have done bullion mints, uh, and se including several of them which are down in the 13, 12, 13 minute range. And I know at least one video they brought a random, a complete random sounding tune and taught them the strategy and still had a 13 minute mint. So this is actually, it's a pretty good strategy. It keeps it fairly quick. Um, sound mints don't last 13 minutes every single time. So yeah, it works pretty well. Now, because I don't have organic throw for this round, I went ahead and lured. And in the same round, I used a cake on one of the tins and two cream pies on the other tin. That allowed me to speed it up just a little bit. And since I'm not going to be able to use all four, I'm not going to be able to cake with all four tunes again in this mint, I went ahead and decided to use my cakes like that. Now again, if you have at least two people with organic throw, do not use your cake in any other circumstance except to use four cakes all at the same time. That allows you to have three battles where you get rid of all the cogs in one round. The biggest goal when you are running soundless anythings is to try and take out all the cogs in the same round using the same gag track. That's what keeps it going just as fast as using sound. Because sound goes so quickly because you're using the same gag track on all the tunes so it's one gag animation and then all the cogs are dying in the same at the same time. Uh, so that's what keeps it going quickly. So to simulate that, you need to use the same gag track on all the tunes and kill as many cogs as you possibly can all at the same time. So on sets of 11, the most common thing to do is use three TNTs. So that's what I've done here. That's going to destroy them. Um, and again, just keep in mind where your tune is at and attack the cog right in front of you. That prevents you from having to use the full 20 seconds to pick cogs because you're not waiting for your teammates to see what they pick and then here I use the the hoses whenever possible do not use your cream pies use hoses like this because those cream pies you'll find you run out of pretty quickly especially when you have a lot of tins and you're using the lure and split cream method so go ahead and just use hoses instead Now here I'm going to go ahead and speed it up because I am really slow at running these things. 
Now, I really do enjoy doing all soundless mints because you get to have a lot of creativity. Um, there's a good handful of different strategies you can use, and it's fun to be able to pick which one you use when instead of just using sound. It's one of the reasons I really like being soundless. So for this battle, I think I just did the, the one cake, two creams, and lure strategy. Um, because I don't have organic throw, that's going to be my go-to here. Yep, and see, I did it. Now the best thing is when you're doing this kind of strategy, just make sure you take turns using cake, just like you would take turns using foghorn. Treat your cakes like they are foghorns and take turns using them. That way when you get towards the end of the mint, you're not going to have one person with three cakes and have everyone be out, because that just doesn't help much. There we go, and also you'll want to take turns with luring and such, um, just because, you again, you don't want one tune having three of something and no one else having it. So this is fairly straightforward. Um, if you have two people with organic throw, you would lure in three or four cakes all at the same time. If you have four people with organic throw, you can all throw on the sets of 11s. That's pretty great. Um, another thing that at least uh, all four people having organic throw helps with is you don't have to switch cogs if someone doesn't have organic throw because you have to be cognizant of which cog is in front of you, and if you don't have organic throw and there's an 11 in front of you, you have to trade cogs with another person, and that can add a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of communication, um, so there's that. So here I'm going to do the one cake, two cream pie strategy again. Um, so it's not very interesting, but yeah, so I'm doing that. Doing that. The quicker you pick, the faster the mint will go. Um, so try not to use the full 20 seconds. Uh, that's what keeps these mints going quickly. I think this mint took me 18 minutes total. Um, and you've already seen how terrible I am at running four tunes. Edamar ran into the wall about 20 times just coming to this room. So a lot of my time was spent running into walls like that. So it was actually, it was a fairly quick mint. Um, gags were also very cooperative with me. They didn't miss too much. So that's good. But yeah, no, I'm just gonna use storms here. Now the next battle is much more interesting. Uh, let me go ahead and speed this up a little. So all four of my tunes have max drop. Uh, well, one of them almost has max drop, but they do enough to kill 11. So I went ahead and did the all drop strategy. Now level 11s, it's going to have a lower accuracy rate on the 11s, but usually with 10s and 9s especially, it's going to hit uh, fairly consistently. As you can see, only one of them missed and the one on the 11 hit well. Uh, but because the higher the cog, the lower the drop's accuracy is, I try not to use this strategy on battles with more than 111. I much prefer doing it on the sets with 111 and 310s, or even on the set with all three ten or all four being 10s. But I, I did that. Uh, only one miss. There are some mints, like one of the videos I'm going to link in the description, for some reason for that group of people, the drop miss or drop hit every single time which is amazing but usually at least one of your pianos will miss so that worked pretty well I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up again and in this battle I'm gonna do the same thing again I'm gonna use four drops um, if my tune would join faster and this time all four of them hit which is pretty great um, that made that battle be awesome I love that and this time, because there are two 11s, I decided not to do the all drop thing again and go ahead and go back to one cake, two cream pies. If you have um, or enough organic throw, you can do four cakes here. If not, you can do two cream pies on one of the 10, two cream pies on the other 10, and then do the storm um, hose strategy. Either way works. Uh, you would just have to lure and pass so you can have all four people available to attack the cogs in the second round. This slows me down a bit trying to remember which one is on which side, uh, but there we have that. I'm speeding it up again because I think I go through an obstacle next. Or no, I just go to a battle. But this battle we're back to the 3 TNT uh, strategy. 
Try your best to make sure that the person who lured last time is using a TNT this time. This way you don't have three people without TNTs and one person with two. That's just going to really mess you up in the future. So now three of my tunes have one TNT left and one person is completely out. Uh, and that makes it pretty useful in a later battle. Uh, if I have another set of two 11s and two 10s, I can use two TNTs on two 11s, or I can save them for the last battle and have just the 12 and 11 to deal with that round. Uh, it's really helpful. Now, while I was running through the obstacles on this, I did not look or even check the barrels to figure out what extra gags I can get because my theory is... My strategy is completely useless if it relies on getting restocks in the different rooms because of course the restocks are entirely entirely random and it's not fair to say well you can only do this strategy if you for sure get a TNT restock. But the kind of restocks you're looking for are cakes, restocks, and TNTs, and possibly pianos but not so much. So cakes and TNTs are what you really want. and. One thing I've always noticed, as you can see really well right here, is you always get a sound restock if you're in there on soundless tunes. I don't think I've ever been in a mint before on a soundless tune where there wasn't a sound restock. It's complete BS. But there you have that. Uh, now here's just me running into a bunch of walls. Um, and I get squished a bunch. And here's the final battle. Now, I have those two TNTs left, so I decided to go with that strategy. So I throw down the two TNTs, and I do a lure and a pass. Um, if you don't have your any TNTs left, you don't have organic cakes, um, try and take out two of the cogs at least. Uh, if you still have pianos, one strategy I haven't shown yet is you can have three people use pianos, and I highly recommend doing it on the 11s, obviously, since they'll actually die. Um, and having the fourth tune use a group tune-up because tune-up actually is a stun for drop So it helps increase the accuracy and it helps it hit better and hopefully at least two of your pianos would hit That way you have two cogs left over and it's pretty easy to take out two cogs with four tunes um, I had cakes left over so I used those to take out these cogs again if you're out of cakes you're out of storms Just figure out what you can do with the gags you have usually the last battle is very much a what on earth do we have left what can we do kind of battle uh, so that's how i did that uh like i said before there'll be links down in the description to more videos showing all soundless bullion mints they're actually really fun uh, and they usually last under 15 minutes so they are not taking longer than sound mints um and i enjoy doing them uh it just one of the things that people always argue is it's going to take longer because no one knows the strategy. But if we teach people the strategy, if we're showing these videos, we're showing random tunes in the full district how to do these strategies, eventually they're going to know them because that's how the sound strategies came about. People made, up, made them up and then they taught them to other people and then eventually it just became the standard. So if we just keep teaching these strategies to people, eventually people are just going to know them and it's going to go much quicker than before. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll be uploading other videos in the future to this channel, so go ahead and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy your soundless tune.